Hello everyone and welcome to round 3 of the Shamkir uh, chess tournament or the Vugargashimov Memorial. Uh, it's a game between David Navara and the Magnus Carlsen and as you've seen yesterday uh, we had a game between Vishwanathan Anand and Magnus Carlsen where uh, Anand tried to play into uh, Carlsen's preparation for his World Chess Championship match uh, with Fabiano Caruana. And here we have a similar situation, David Navara does, the, the, does something uh, similar. Uh, and uh, we're gonna get into that. I do hope you enjoyed yesterday's joke by uh, by um, uh, Danny Ranch, and uh, a lot of you seem uh, uh, said in the comments that you were actually fooled for a few seconds. So I'm very happy. It means the uh, well that the the joke was successful. And uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, Danny also made an uh, well an impression of uh, John Bartholomew. So I'll also put a link to his video uh, in the description below if you want to check that out as well. Uh, get, getting back to this game, uh, it's uh, Navarra versus Carlson. Navarra has the white pieces, and he opens with e4. And since you've all seen. Uh, the, the World Chess Championship match between Carlsen and Fabiano, you know that Carlsen replies with c5, the Sicilian defense. Uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, and d4. C captures, knight captures, everything the same as in the match Carlsen versus Caruana, knight to f6. Uh, we have knight to c3, and now e5, the Lasker variation, or the Pelican variation, uh, wh whichever you prefer. Knight to db5, uh, we have d6 by Carlsen, and now knight to d5. We have all, uh, already covered all of this uh, when we uh, analyzed the um, games between Carlsen and Caruana. Knight captures, pawn captures, and here in uh, the in uh, some of the games, I believe in game 8 and 10, Carlsen retreated with knight to b8. Later, he tried knight to e8, I believe in game uh, 12, uh, but all of those games ended in a draw. Here, Carlsen retreats with knight to b8 uh, and a4. Uh, Navarra just plays everything the same as was in the game between Carlsen and Caruana. Uh, we have bishop to e7, bishop to e2 by Navarra, we have castles by Carlsen, castles by Navarra, and knight to d7. And this is where, uh, well, we have a, a different move. Uh, here in game 8, uh, Caruana tried bishop to d2 with uh, some ideas of uh, a5, uh, knight retreated to uh, a3 to c4, and then after this pawn captured on f4, Carlsen played knight to e5, uh, the knight uh, went all the way uh, to b6. Uh, and in, in game 10, uh, Corona tried that uh, very nice b4 idea, this, that was uh, uh, most likely my favorite moment. Uh, and in this game, uh, it's uh, Navarra who deviates, he plays king to h1 here first. Uh, and Carlsen immediately pushes the knight back, we have a6, knight to a3, uh, and now there are a couple of moves that were played in this position, such as uh, f5 and some other moves, but here the move Carlsen played uh, is a new move um, uh, in the position. He plays a5, which could be an improvement uh, to, to his game against uh, Caruana. He doesn't allow white to grab more space with a5 uh, to give this knight a nice outpost on b6 for his knight. So uh, already uh, on move 13 we have a completely new game, and this is what's really interesting. First Anand tried to, to play into Carlsen's pre World Chess Championship preparation, now Navarra tries it. And uh, well, le let's see how it goes. Uh, but it's uh, although uh, Navarra deviated, it's uh, a5, this is a new move, which most likely Navarra was not prepared for. But we'll see what happens. Uh, we have f4, the similar idea that uh, Caruana employed. Uh, knight to c, uh, sorry, uh, we have f5 now uh, by Carlsen, knight to c4 uh, and b6 now. Uh, we have rook to a3, a very nice rook lift, shifting the rook over to the attack. Uh, e captures on f4, we have bishop captures on f4, and now comes knight to c5. Uh, an excellent outpost for the knight, since uh, you will not be able to kick it away with b4. Uh, we have rook to e3, uh, an excellent... Uh, 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 file for the rook, uh, and now Carlsen goes for g5. Seems like a very risky idea, uh, but you know, if it works, it works. And here you really have to figure out what to do, uh, because uh, there's a problem. If you go something like rook to g3, Carlsen is going to go knight to e4. Defend the g5 pawn, attack the rook here. Once the rook moves, you could lose easily lose the bishop here, uh, and then you could sacrifice the exchange with bishop to d3 and gain some sort of an attack. Uh, but uh, Navarra decides to give up uh, uh, the rook differently. Navarra plays rook captures on e7. And now, of course, you're not going to capture here and allow bishop captures. This would be excellent for white. Uh, here, instead, Carlsen plays 
pawn captures on f4 and now you have a problem uh, because there's no bishop here to help out with uh, with the capture uh, on d6 and the, the rook doesn't have anywhere to go. Uh, here all of these squares are covered by Carlsen's pawns and the rook is lost. So here you just have to figure out how to give give away the rook. And uh, Navarra does it uh, in the best possible way. Uh, we have rook to e6, uh, knight captures on e6, d captures on e6 and now bishop captures on e6 by Carlsen. Uh, and rook captures on f4. We have bishop captures on c4 by Carlsen, bishop captures with check, king to h8, and now comes g4. So as you can see, uh, both of the kings are, are quite uh, quite uh, naked here. Uh, and, uh, well, Carlsen uh, has, what Carlsen has going for him is that he is uh, still up the exchange. So queen to f6 by Carlsen, uh, and now comes c3, just in, in enforcing the d4 square, not allowing uh, queen captures on b2. Uh, and here we have queen to e5, just an, an excellent centralizing square for the key, a queen. Uh, queen to f1 now with a triple attack against the f5 pawn. And here we have rook 8 to e8. Uh, Navarra captures on f5. We have g captures on f5 and now rook to f6, just blockading uh, that pawn. And now after Carlsen, you know, calms everything down, he will uh, he will be able to enjoy his, uh, his, ex his being up the exchange. Uh, we have queen to f2 by Navarra and now queen to c5, offering uh, a trade of queens. Uh, we have uh, king to g2 defending and here queen to c6 check. King to, h uh, king to h3, now comes queen back to c5 and king back to g2. Navarra is down the exchange so he doesn't mind repeating moves. And here Carlsen decides to go into the endgame. We have queen captures, uh, rook captures... Uh, Sorry, rook captures on f2 and now comes uh, rook to e4. Just pressuring the bishop. Uh, if the bishop moves, you will uh, you will lose the a4 pawn. Uh, but here, Navarra finds a very nice idea. He plays rook to e6, gives up the a4 pawn. Uh, Carlsen grabs it. We have rook captures on a4, uh, on a4 and now king to f3. King to g7. Uh, we have rook to d2 going after the d6 pawn. And now comes king to h6. Uh, rook captures on d6 by Navarra, king to g5, and now uh, here you cannot capture the b6 pawn. If you capture the b6 pawn, uh, then you fall for rook to f4 check. And uh, once uh, the king moves, let's say king e2, now you get rook captures on f5, where uh, if you capture, you will be down the exchange, but there is no better move. You have to go into this uh, line, uh, or if you don't do anything, then just rook uh, to e5 will win the bishop. So here you would have to trade down. Uh, and then after bishop captures here, you will play rook captures here, uh, king d3, and now rook captures on h2, you, uh, black will enter this winning endgame. Uh, so that's one possibility, uh, if you capture on b6, Navarra decides that he will not do it, he goes rook to d8, uh, and now rook to h6 by Carlsen, uh, going after the uh, dh2 pawn. Uh, we have rook to g8 check, king back to f6, and now rook back to b8. Uh, and here Carlsen just grabs the pawn. Rook captures on h2. Uh, we have rook captures on b6, and now king to g5. Uh, we have f6 by white. Uh, now, of course, you cannot capture it. If you capture it, then, uh, well, we can just show it. If king captures bishop b3, check picks up the rook, so that uh, would be winning for white. Uh, after f6, we have uh, rook to f4. Uh, by Carlsen checking the king, uh, king goes back uh, to g3 and now comes rook h to f2. So the king doesn't really have all that many squares to go to, but on the other hand, uh, if the black king moves, uh, then the rooks are unable to move from the from the f-file as they are guarding each other. Uh, first, rook to b5 check, king captures on f6, and here bishop to g4. Uh, now, uh, the, the rooks cannot leave the f-file the f as uh, both of them are guarding each other. Uh, we have a4 by Carlsen, uh, we have c4, white now starts pushing his pass pawn. Here is one such example where you cannot capture or you would lose the, the, uh, the f2 rook. Uh, we have king to g6 uh, and now comes c5. And here, uh, here Carlsen plays a very nice idea. Uh, the problem with immediately going h5 is that after, uh, after <laughs> white uh, captures here, uh, which is possible, uh, king will capture and now you get c6 with check. And now it's a, <clears throat> well, it's a very complicated line, but you can easily mess up and, uh, and end up drawing it. For example, king g6, uh, c7, and now there's no good way to, to guard um, uh, the pawn from queening. Uh, you would have to go, uh, you, you can't go something like uh, check uh, and then here because there's the pawn uh, blocking the c3 square. Uh, and then... Um, 
Uh, on the other hand, you have to go something like rook to uh, rook to f8, uh, or or if you give a check, you could go then rook to f8, and then rook to b8 will uh, will again go in white favor. Uh, you will here 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 have to just uh, settle for a perpetual uh, with with just going back and forth and checking the white king. Uh, so after the c5 move, Carlson played a3, which is a very nice idea. Either he will get a pass pawn that's already on a2, or uh, white has to uh, well. Uh, uh, leave control of the c3 square. Uh, b captures on a3 is played. Navarra grabs the pawn, but now uh, Carlsen can push h5. And now the same idea no longer applies because now after bishop captures on h5, there are no complications. Just king captures uh, c6 with check, king to g6, and now if c7, Carlsen can just play uh, rook f3 check. King has to go to g4, and now the rook can come to c3, as there is no pawn here to, to guard the c3 square, and everything is uh, everything is perfectly fine. Uh, Carlsen is up a rook, the pawn is uh, stopped, and uh, Carlsen will win this game. Uh, so, after this h5 move, we have rook to b4 by Navarra, uh, with ideas that... Uh, and, uh, okay, uh, maybe just to show... Uh, before going into this line that instead of this line if you go something like bishop to d1 to try and uh, just move the bishop uh, then h4 is the idea uh, king has to go to h3 then just rook to d4 uh, for forces either to capture the bishop or the other threat is rook to d2 followed by rook to h2 checkmate and then you'd have something like rook b6 check king g5 uh, rook to d6 only move if you don't want to suffer rook to d3 check which is even faster which would end uh, result in checkmate so you'd have to play something like this but again rook d2 now you threaten checkmate here uh, and after white trades you would go bishop f3 and now just uh, rook d3 king blocks and you will uh, h3 check king to f2 rook captures on a3 and you will once again uh, basically trade down into the same winning end game so it's not possible to capture it's not possible to go bishop d1 that's why rook to b4 is played by navarra uh, and it's a nice idea if you capture, of course, then a captures on b4 creates uh, two connected pass pawns. And, uh, well, you have to move the rook, rook b2, now comes the bishop to e6. Uh, and if you capture the rook, then you have problems. Then just c6, and uh, you cannot block the pawn from behind as the bishop covers that square. So you'd have to go something like rook to b6, c7, rook here, and then, well, you would just have to give up a rook, and it's it's a draw. Uh, so, after this rook to b4 move, Carlsen of course did not capture, Carlsen played uh, rook to f8, uh, and here we have bishop to d1 now. Uh, rook to d2 by Carlsen, bishop to back to f3, and now comes rook to d3, attacking the a3 pawn, uh, and now comes rook to f4, again wanting to trade rooks, but here Carlsen just uh, quickens his, uh, the advancement of his h pawn h4 check you cannot capture of course as you, you're going to lose the rook uh, and if rook captures then both of the rooks are uh, smashing down on that bishop on f3 so king to g4 now we have rook captures on f4 king captures on f4 uh, and rook captures on a3 so it's a similar line as the one that uh, navarra was able to avoid uh, but he he had no choice he had to trade down into it we have c6 and here you can see that the light square bishop is is quite excellent controlling the c6 pawn and also controlling the queening square so not not uh, not all that bad but uh, the, the position is completely winning for black uh, and carlson knows it we have rook to c3 uh bishop to d5 uh, and now h3 uh, we have king to e5, uh, and now h2 is uh, is a very nice move, but uh, there is a better move. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the move that is uh, much better than h2 as it wins much quicker. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds uh, for you to decide whether you want to do it or not. Well, I have a, a nice sip of my water. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent uh, endgame player and a quick one at that. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, instead of h2 immediately, first rook to c5. It's it's just over. So here, whatever you play doesn't really matter. In the game, Navarra played king to d6, 
And now the move you also had to find if you found rook to c5 is rook captures on d5. But it's uh, it's really, it's uh, I mean, it's just a poetic, it's almost poetic how Carlsen does it uh, instead of this h2 line. Because now after king captures, Carlsen played h2. And now, of course, you don't gain anything by advancing the pawn because Carlsen brings a queen into the game with check. And it's very interesting because a c pawn is often drawn if, if the white king can reach the corner. But in this case, it's not, of course, Carlsen and saw it and he decided that uh, it was winning. Here Navarra played king to d4, just not allowing Carlsen to bring a queen into the game with check, uh, but as he played d4 he also resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, it, it's uh, it, it's completely winning, but to show you why it's completely winning, we for, <laughs> I'll first show you why it's winning uh, after you play c7. Let's say queen h1 check, uh, now you have to move the king, and now you get uh, queen to b7, just uh, not allowing the pawn to queen, and after you prepare it, king to d7, now you get king to f7, king to d8, uh, and now of course you get queen to b6, you pin the pawn, uh, and the king doesn't really have anywhere to go, you can either go behind the pawn, which then the black king takes this opportunity, well, not there obviously, but takes this opportunity uh, to, uh, to come closer to the pawn, uh, or you will go here, and then it's just a forced checkmate, you will go queen e6 check, king d8, and queen e8 will be checkmate. Uh, but uh, I will also show, for those of you who are perhaps new to chess, why, if, uh, if white is able to bring the king all the way to the corner, uh, it's a draw. Uh, we already mentioned this plenty of times, the a pawn, the c pawn, the f pawn, and the h pawn, uh, can be drawn even if even if you just have a pawn and your opponent has a king. Uh, for example, we'll, we'll show one such line. For example, queen h1 check, uh, king to d6, and now let's say uh, <clears throat> uh, let's say uh, black plays uh, a couple of silly moves. Uh, let's say he go he, he tries something like queen to h2 check. Let's try a couple of checks here. For some reason, let's say black does this, uh, and then you go something like here to prevent the pawn. Uh, black will go here, you will play check, and uh, now the white king will not go into the corner and allow the black king to come closer, uh, but white will just go to the corner, play king to a8, and now black has no moves. I mean, he does, but either white will bring a queen into the game, or black will finally capture the pawn, but now it's stalemate, so it's a draw. Uh, but yeah, it's it's similar with, with uh, like I said, the A pawn, the C pawn, the F pawn, and the H pawn, which you can also test out for yourselves if you're interested, and you know, show show your friends in uh, uh, in the bar or or in the library. Uh, but yeah. After King to D4, Navarro resigned the game, and yet another victory for Magnus Carlsen in a row in the in the Gashimo Memorial. Uh, so it's a two for two. First, Anand tried uh, Caruana's preparation against Carlsen. Now Navarro tried Caruana's preparation against Carlsen. Uh, and it simply doesn't work, uh, which I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, it shouldn't work. Carlson had uh, he he had months to prepare for everything, and uh, well, I would say that he knows th uh, these lines better better than anyone else. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll see. It's it's a long tournament. People will try more, and I guess I guess you know they they will also try Caruana's preparation against him. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we will not be showing the standings as uh, I will most likely be showing another game uh, from round three of the Gashimov Memorial. Uh, I think um, maybe Anand versus Mamedyarov as they have uh, finished their game. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Alan Ferns, Michael Hildebrand, Paul Staples, Manish Binval, and Richard Sully for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully, with some more interesting content. And if, if you are interested in the lines that were uh, mentioned in this game, I will also put a link to Game 8 and 10 between Carlsen and Caruana from the World Chess Championship match, if you just want to check that out as well. So, thank you all, and I will see you soon.